Story time. That time I was living in my car in San Francisco. What up YouTube? It's your boy Jermaine back with another video. This video I thought I would make a story time video. I was just out riding the bike. I made some footage. Thought I would make a story time and you know we'll have some footage to go with the story time. So anyway, thought I would talk about the time that I was homeless living in my car in San Francisco. Now this sounds pretty extreme, but let's just jump right into it because there's really not that much to it. I'm pretty sure some people can relate with the situation that I was in. I'm pretty sure that some people would probably think that this was probably not the not 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 the not the worst idea, but let's just um jump right into this. So first off, let me just give you guys a breakdown of like my rent situation and like like my like living situation and that that type of thing okay so when i first moved to sf like i was uh, living with like an ex-girlfriend like we we, we both moved here together and we had an apartment and we're paying like eighteen hundred dollars a month and we, we, were, we were splitting that straight down the middle so we're paying like 900 bucks each okay not so bad not so bad smacked it in the middle of downtown then, you know, we broke up, she ended up moving out. I had a roommate for a short amount of time, but then I was really stuck on the, the hook for that whole $1,800 a month. Cool, not bad, not bad. I ended up moving out of that place because I met this girl off Tinder, ended up living in, moving in with her, and I was literally paying like $200 a month in rent. And it's kind of insane when you're paying $200 a month in rent in one of the most expensive places in the country. and like m most people I talk to like they pay like way more than two hundred dollars like a thousand like fifteen hundred you know and I am you know sharing a bed with my girlfriend and I'm roughly paying like two hundred bucks a month well I don't really want to get into the story too much because my ex-girlfriend had something going on some sort of deal going on but eventually our rent was like basically zero okay look our rent was like zero we just had to do things like take care of the house and do gardening work and stuff like that but our rent was zero and rent was zero for maybe like two years right and it's pretty awesome <laughs> it's pretty awesome when you're when you're in zero um i i noticed that back then i wasn't working as much um i you know was living more off uh youtube referrals and no uber referrals uber driver referrals and you know i uh, eventually we broke up and I moved out and when I moved out I found myself in this situation where like crap I gotta pay like top dollar so for the first like couple months instead of like actually going and getting an apartment and like renting an apartment because that that's like a hassle like it's so much easier to find a job in San Francisco than sometimes than it is to find like roommates and find people to live with you know so I said to myself look I don't want to stay full time like, I just want to stay for a couple months and then take off and go to New York for the summer. So that's exactly what I did. I just stayed at an Airbnb for like two months. It was the type of like party house type Airbnb. Um, stay for two months. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was like basically like living in a hostel. Like this, this kid, um, you know, his parents like left in the house and he basically put it on Airbnb and just turned it into like a freaking hostel. And it, it was amazing. And I stayed in multiple Airbnbs like that. Like one was like a party hostel type place. One was like, um, this like, like sort of hacker house type place. Like everybody was always on the computer and like no one smoked weed, no one drank, like no one really talked to each other. The other place, everyone drank, everyone smoked weed, Everyone talked to each other, and then like sometimes I would go stay at another place, and it would have a completely different theme to it. Like I, I, I just liked it, right? For the first month, for the first two months, I was, you know, living at um, Airbnbs. I think I stayed at like maybe two different Airbnbs during that two month, like in San Francisco or Daly City, like within the area. And I thought it was really, really awesome because I'm like, this is cool, like. Like I'm, 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 I'm getting to stay with like different people. I'm getting to stay in different areas and getting to explore the Bay very, very differently. And then I ended up going to New York. So when I ended up going to New York, it was the same thing. Like Airbnbs for three months, and I was, you know, mainly living off of like, you know, YouTube money and like um, Uber driver referrals. It was mainly Uber driver referrals because Uber driver referrals were like insane back then. Like I actually have a homie that lives in San Francisco. Homie made like a half a million dollars off of Uber driver referrals. 
like a half a million dollars off. So, so Uber driver referrals were really high. I wasn't really talking about it that much back then because it was so hot that I just didn't want to really talk about it. But now, like, I'll talk about it because, like, Uber's public and Uber ain't just throwing out money like that anymore. But get back from New York. Now, when I get back from New York, I like stay at an Airbnb for like a couple months, like this type a type hotel type deal in Teal. It, it was cool, and then after that, I like went traveling. Okay, now this is the year that things change because this was the year that like I basically like left the U.S. like five times, right? So I would, I would leave like I was here, I was there in January, then I would take off, travel for like a month, and then come back to the U.S. for a month. Stay at an Airbnb for a month, work a little bit, make some YouTube videos in the U.S., and then take off, go travel for another month, and then come back to the U.S., come back to San Francisco, work, stay at a different Airbnb in a different neighborhood. So that was pretty, that was really, really awesome. So I remember during that year, I stayed at this, like every Airbnb was really, really, really cool really really fun i remember staying at this one airbnb in twin peaks like basically the people bought this house or they got this lease on this house i don't know but they basically had this huge house in twin peaks and they're just gonna make it like a hacker house like they were just gonna rent it out to like people and like peck it out but i guess the neighbors complain and they wouldn't let them do it anymore so since they wouldn't let them do it anymore and and since the people had like i think it was like three weeks left i actually got to stay there for like the last three weeks and that place was like super dope right so toward towards the ending of the year towards the ending of the year because you know i had like left the u.s like five times that year and i would just come back and stay like maybe for three weeks or four weeks and i remember it was like november I came back and it was like straight up like November or something like that. November, December. Like it, it, it was it was cold outside. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, look, dude, I can get an Airbnb. Right? Airbnb is gonna be like um, you know, maybe a thousand bucks, maybe fifteen hundred bucks, depending on the situation, you know? Depending if, if it's like a hostel type situation, maybe it might be eight hundred bucks. If it's um you know, because I'm the type of person like I'll wake up at like seven in the morning and I'll be, I'll leave and be gone like all day and then come back at like 10 PM. Like I don't even cook at home for the most part. And it got to the point where like, I'm thinking this makes no sense for me to be paying for me to be paying, you know, t like anywhere from a thousand to $1,200 a month just to sleep. And I'm not even there. Right? I'm not even there. Like that money's gone already. And then on top of that, like sometimes I stay in Oakland, which I still have to commute to the city. And then there's like the, the bridge that the you know you have to pay the toll on the bridge. And sometimes it's six dollars, sometimes it's four dollars. And then usually if I drive from Oakland to the city early in the morning, like I'm not gonna go back to Oakland in the middle of the day because I don't want to pay tolls twice. And then not only do I want to pay tolls twice, I don't want to sit in traffic twice, you know, because there's always traffic on the bridge. So I'm thinking to myself, yo, I spent a lot of time in traffic on the bridge and I spent a lot of money on tolls. Not a lot of money, but I spent money on tolls and I spent money at this place that I really don't stay much. Like, I, I really just don't stay much, you know, I'm like, I, I'm there in the morning. I'm there back at night. And then I was also driving an electric car. Now, with the electric car, you have to charge the electric car. So this is the situation I found myself running into. Okay, This is how my day would work. I would wake up at 6 in the morning. Okay, Maybe 7 in the morning. I would get in the car and get Starbucks. Go get coffee. Go get a cup of coffee. And then go from getting coffee, go drive over to Whole Foods and charge the car. So maybe it'll take me 30 minutes to charge the car. Charge the car, jump on the bridge, go over to the city, work in the city, you know, stop, charge the car at like two o'clock, hang out for a little bit and then keep working. Work from like four to like maybe eight. Charge the car a little bit again in the city and then take off, go back to Oakland. Get back to Oakland around 10 p.m. 
Now the next morning, I gotta do the same process. I gotta do the same process. The next morning, I gotta go to charge the car. Not, not, not for the whole charge, because I like break it up and do it in sessions. But I'm saying to myself, I'm spending a lot of time charging the car. A lot of time charging the car. And this, this sucks, right? This really sucks, okay? And then I start to notice something. I start to notice that, yo, every time I'm at the car charging, I get like charging the car, I always see people sleeping in the car. Now, I always notice this in the middle of the day. I never noticed this at night because at night I would always like charge at the location in Oakland or maybe I would charge at the Whole Foods, but then the Whole Foods, it would close at like 10 p.m. So no one would be there like past 10 p.m. 10 p.m. because they would close the parking lot. However, there was a Walgreens in San Francisco where you could charge your car all night long. Well, there's actually a handful of locations where you can charge your car all night long, okay? So I thought, I was thinking to myself, I was thinking to myself, what if, what if I went back to the US and just rented a car and just slept in the car the whole time and didn't even freaking rent an Airbnb? What if I did that? Because I see people like sleeping in cars all the time, right? I'm thinking like, how would they know any difference? And I'm thinking if I'm charging the car and I'm sleeping in the car, like, well, it, it kind of looks like I'm just charging the car. It doesn't look like I'm, I'm sleeping in the car. And then I just thought about it for a second. I just thought about it. I was like, yo, I think this could work out. I think this could work out great. I think this could work out real great. So I said to myself, how am I going to make this work out? I was like, okay, this is what I'm, this is what I'm going to do. See, back then I didn't, I didn't drive uber i didn't do people i just did food right i just did packages and stuff like that task rabbit jobs so no one was in the car okay after i left the airport i had a friend pick me up and drop me off at this rental car place i'm not going to say the name of the place because i don't want to say the name of the place but i had someone drop me off there and i would pick up an electric car okay and i remember i he dropped me off and I had both suit, I had both bags and they, they both know, they both knew me from YouTube and they were like, Hey, Jermaine, oh, you're back. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Just got back from the airport, you know, just got back from the airport, put the bags in the car. Once I put the bags in the car, I went straight to storage because I need to switch my items. Like all this stuff I have is stuff that I, I was using traveling, but this is not San Francisco stuff. So I went to storage, put everything in storage, right? And I only grabbed just one backpack full of things, okay? Some socks, some underwear, some clothes, like just one backpack full of things. And I also had the electric skateboard in the car. So this was the strategy. I would just drive like normal, okay? I would just, just drive like normal in the, in the day. Now, at night, I would go to Whole Foods and I would charge the car, okay? Just like normal, just like normal. And then after Whole Foods, after 10 p.m., after Whole Foods closed, I would usually do a couple different things. Sometimes I would go to the charging location in, like, let's say I would go to a charging location in Daly City, Right, I would just leave the city and go to a charging location. Sometimes I would I wouldn't do the same thing back to back. Like I wouldn't go to the same places on the same nights. So some nights I would go down to Daly City and get away. Go to the charging location in Daly City. The problem with Daly City is the cops are not they're not so busy. So if they see someone sitting at the charging location for five hours, that's gonna bring up a red flag for them. However, in San Francisco, if they see someone sitting at a charging location for five hours, they may not even pay them any attention because there's so many people driving the same exact electric car that they may think it's just someone else with a different electric car that's the same car, okay? So I would just switch up my, switch up my location. So sometimes I would pick neighborhoods. Sometimes I would go to Pack Heights, like, or Pacific Heights neighborhood. This is a very, very affluent neighborhood in the city. The problem with Pack Heights is they would have, like, security guards walk around at night, and I don't even think people even, know, like, like know that. I think what would happen is, like, they would have a security guard, like, sitting in a car, and, like, whenever I would, like, drive around and, like, park, 
and they see me like not get out of the car like they would like walk around but like i don't remember them ever like shining a light in the car i think they would just like go walk around but like like I, every now and then i would go to peck heights gosh sleeping in oakland was actually like the easiest thing to do just because you had less foot traffic dude some nights was really really difficult to find a place to to, to park um the reason why i say that is because parking now you think Oh yeah, you can just park anywhere if you're sleeping in a car. Well, yeah, you can just park anywhere, but then you don't exactly want to just park anywhere. You don't want to park like directly underneath a light, but then you also don't want to park right next to a sidewalk where there's going to be people walking their dogs, you know, in the middle of the night. Because yeah, that's one thing I noticed about living in a car in San Francisco. People literally walk their dogs in the middle of the night. So I would literally like park in certain spots like twin peaks was one neighborhood that i would park in and usually i would move in the middle of the night like very rarely i would stay in one place and then also the times i would go to sleep would, would vary greatly so sometimes i would go to sleep um you know at midnight i would usually try to go to sleep at midnight because if i could go to sleep at midnight i could pull up to like the charging location at walgreens on columbus at um what columbus and bay i could pull up to that walgreens at midnight and how it would work at the walgreens yo this was so freaking classic yo check this out this is how it would work so i would pull up to walgreens at midnight right there are two chargers two fast chargers and one slow charger the fast charger you can charge your car from let's say 20 percent to 80 percent in like 40 minutes right but if you want to charge your car from 80% to 100%, it might take an hour, okay? So what a lot of people would do, I would pull up to the parking lot, and it would be three cars charging already. Two cars on the fast charger, one car on the slow charger. And it would be two cars sitting in the parking lot. I'd just pull up, pull up next to one of the other cars, and just let the seat back and just go to sleep. Just straight go to sleep, right? Just pass out. Eventually, it didn't happen every night, but it, it, usually someone would walk up. Hey, man, you want to go charge? They would literally knock on the window and ask you if you want to go charge. So from there, I would be like, yo, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, 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 for sure I want to charge, right? And then from there, I would pull up to the pump, right? Well, not the pump, but pull up to the charger. Now, the cool thing about driving the electric cars is... You could have the car charging at the charging, like at the charging location. And as the car is charging, you can have the car on and you can have the heater on in the car. And I remember it was like December or November, one of those months, but it was cold, right? It was cold outside. It was straight cold outside. And I had the heat on in the car with the car running and the car charging at the same time. And I remember, yo, like some of those nights were like some of that best freaking sleep because Whenever I woke up, like, I was already ready to go. Like, I didn't have to worry about charging the car and all that. And you might wonder, okay, what did you shower? What did you shower if you were sleeping in your car? Guys, that's the easiest one to answer. Just go to 24-Hour Fitness. Even Uber drivers, they would give you, like, a discount. So you would pay, like, I think $40 a month. And you can go to the Super Sports. And if you go to the Super Sports, they give you a free towel when you walk in. So, like, bam, there's your gym right there. You don't have to worry about that situation um also um what else other things that uh, was tricky about living in the car you just notice that like okay put it like this starbucks you, you just notice that certain places you would see people all the time they were living in their car starbucks was one location that starbucks on california the 24-hour starbucks oh my gosh yo so sometimes i would wake up at like four in the morning or five in the morning and i would be awake and I like i don't want to go back to sleep like i'm good so i would like drive over to that starbucks right at like five in the morning 4 30 in the morning guys it would be so many people sleeping in their car at that starbucks now at that starbucks it was nobody sleeping in their car stealthy like it was like literally people like just parked right outside of starbucks like just passed out 
half of them, more than half of them are Uber drivers. Now, I know a lot of people are going to point fingers and say, oh, that's so, that's so messed up. Uber's not paying their drivers enough. They have to sleep in their cars. A lot, some of these drivers, a lot of these drivers were, were, were from Sacramento or Los Angeles. And they drove, like, they'll, they'll drive up to San Francisco and stay for, like, a month. No, no, no. Let me take that back. Not a month. They'll stay for, like, a week or two weeks. I don't know. Maybe some of them do stay for a month. And they would just, like, work in the daytime, sleep in their car at night, shower at the gym. Because, like, the business is so much better. Like, you know, people in Sacramento, they just don't make as much driving Uber um, like people make in San Francisco. And also the rent is much, much cheaper in Sacramento versus the rent in San Francisco. So, like, people would come here and do that. And, like, I was doing it for a minute, too. And, you know, I'm just making this video just to, you know, just to share my experience. Because I know a lot of people are going to say, like, this is a very, very misleading video because you were homeless for... You were homeless for a financial reason. Like, you are homeless for a reason that, that most people... Like, basically, I picked to be homeless to save money so I can spend more money to travel. And I know a lot of people, when they watch this video, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you weren't actually homeless. Like, like you, you, you picked, you picked. But I did pick to do this. I did pick to do this. But one thing I did notice, I did notice some of the things that, that, that the homeless people go through. That, that, that they go through, you know, uh, I did notice that I noticed a lot of things that they go through and, you know, being outside all the time and, you know, going like not necessarily being outside all the time because I'm in a car, but then it's like you're in a car, but you're still kind of like outside, you know, it's like, like right now I'm filming this video and I'm, I'm like indoors and like I'm, I'm indoors, like I can hide from the sun, like I'm inside of a building, like I can use a restroom like in a car. It's not so simple to use the restroom. I mean, it can be done, but it's just not so... It's not like me getting up from the computer and walking over, going to the restroom, closing the door, and, like, flushing the toilet. Like, it's a completely different experience. And, yeah, I thought I would make a story time video talking about the time that I was living in my car in San Francisco. I don't know. Maybe some people will find this video of interest. Maybe some people won't. But yeah, anyway, there's another video. Like, comment, subscribe, and peace out, yo.